I've done a lot of Buicks in my time, never had an issue until now. And here we are in the dining room of Nick's Garage. Welcome to my show, you guys. I got something very special today on the dyno. It's not a 440 Mopar, it's a big 455 Buick motor, 1970. Yes, it is a torque monster from the factory, rated 510 foot-pounds of torque and 360 horsepower. Not a very high RPM range motor, very good motor. It belongs to a 1970 Buick Skylark, it belongs to a gentleman named Dave from Ontario, Canada, and he's brought it in here for me to check it out and rebuild it because someone had to rebuild it and put it in storage for a long time. So he's asked me to take it apart and see if there's anything wrong with it. But uh, we found there were low compression pistons, so we got rid of those. We put a, a little bit higher compression. We're like a 9.4, 9.3 compression ratio right now with these pistons. We did a valve job. One cylinder was kind of rusted, so we went 10 thou overboard from the 30 where it used to be, and we went 40 thou overboard. He brought me a cam to install. It is a high performance camshaft. It's made by Reed. Here we go. Here's all the cam specs if you guys want to see. This is something I really want to see what it's going to do. It's an old, old cam. I don't think they exist anymore. Have they been bought out by anybody? I do not know. But you know, it's a brand new cam. It's a flat tappet hydraulic lifter. So you know what I said? You got it? You want me to install it? We did. So we did a complete overhaul. We had the engine rebalanced. We had the connector rods resized. We also installed ARP connector rod bolts. We had all new bearings. He has a brand new timing chain on it, brand new oil pump. Nick has put lots of good things into this build, but he's had some challenges along the way too. But after we have uh, broken in the cam, we wanted to see if it can idle. But you know what? It ran so lean that it did not want to idle. So I figured, you know what? He did bring me a Rochester carburetor that was being completely rebuilt. Maybe there was something wrong with this Rochester carburetor. I do not know. So I said, you know what, I'll take his carburetor off, I'll put on one of my carburetors, which I do a lot of dyno testing, and I know they don't run lean on idle. And guess what? The same issue. Too, too lean on idle. So I figured we have a vacuum leak. Well, we started looking at some testing, and uh, we started to find, uh, and uh, trying to find out, see what's going on. I tried to reach it out on idle, open up the screws on idle on both carburetors. Didn't want to change anything. So we started to make a search on vacuum leaks, and we think, we're not sure. Manny came by the other day to put a vacuum pump on the intake manifold, and we tried to see if we had any uh, vacuum leaks. But we had a vacuum leak coming through the PCB valve grommet, which, uh, you know, there was quite a bit of vacuum coming out of there. Now, was the vacuum coming from the bottom of the intake manifold? I don't know. I have also checked the intake manifold to see if there's any cracks. I didn't see any cracks. Was it warped? I'm not so sure. But I've decided to mill down the manifold 60 thou, which we did, which I have it here right now. And I've also decided in case it's not compressing very well for some reason because the heads were not really shaved down and it was only decked 15 thou, there's no reason why the intake manifold should have a leak. We know that the intake manifold gasket is just like a 440. It's a intake valley pan and it's a metal to metal cast iron intake cast iron cylinder heads and it's like this exactly like a 440 but in this case i decided to put a paper gasket on both sides the reason was maybe it's leaking on the lower part of the intake i tried by putting a gasket on the top and left it just a bare metal on the bottom tried it made no change at all so what i decided now is i milled the intake manifold for 60 thou and i've installed paper gasket on both sides of the baffle or the valley pan gasket. If you take a good look right here, I also planed the intake manifold right here. I cut it down with 60 thou. I wanted to make sure it wasn't warped. So, and it's an original piece, it's cast iron, it's very heavy, designed with a Rochester. So, what now we're gonna do is put it back on the engine and hopefully I get it to run with the uh, idle that I wanted to. We need an air fuel ratio of about 13.2, 13.5 for idle. If I can get that, I'll be more than pleased. And there was another issue, the oil pump. For some reason, we had the motor running, oil pressure was great, but I had a little issue between the cover of the pump and the time machine cover, which is an external mounted oil pump, and had this very, very thin gasket. 
and it was leaking through the gasket. So what I ended up with, I ended up buying a Felpo gasket, which I believe is a little bit thicker, which should help preventing an oil leak through the casing, or should I say housing, I should say, housing. Here it is. This is slightly thicker. So I'm gonna put a new gasket here and hopefully it doesn't leak. And this is where it is right here. And the other reason why we put them on a dyno, not only are we looking for horsepower and torque, we're also looking for other issues like oil leaks. And in, like in this case, we have a little oil leak through the gasket on the oil pump. So anyways, we're gonna get to that. And another thing is because my customer wanted a little bit more horsepower. So when I did the head job on this, when I did the valve job, I also cleaned out the bowl area, all the sharp edges, just see if I could gain a little bit more horsepower. And you know what? It's a daily driver. It's a cruiser. We're not racing with it. He's also got a set of chrome headers on it. And he's still running the points to Schubert right here. You know, a lot of people think a Buick is not a muscle car because, you know, people think a Buick is like a luxury car. But in this case, you know, this is a 455 Buick GS or Stage 1, 1970. And, you know, this is one of the very rare engines that it's above 500 foot-pounds of torque. This is 510, 510 torque. A Hemi has 490. This one here has 510. So you can call it a torque monster if you wish. Horsepower, nowhere near 425 like a Hemi, but this has 360 horsepower. Also, as a V8, this is one of the lightest in weight engine. In other words, a V8, this V8 Buick compared to a Hemi. Oh my God, the Hemi is a lot heavier than this engine complete, let me tell you. But anyways, all I wanna do is tell you guys that this is a good motor from Buick. And by the way, I did work for Buick for five years back in 76 to 81. I've done a lot of Buicks. I'm very well known with them. And for some reason, I didn't have any issues at all until this day with this one that I can't get it to idle because I, for some reason, we got a vacuum leak on idle. And right here I am tonight to put the intake back on and look for this problem. And hopefully, this is it. And you know what's funny? I've done a lot of Buicks in my life, especially when I used to work at the dealership. I never had any issues. I used to build them, blown engines, blown pistons or whatever, spun bearings. I did them all. Never had an issue until right now. I built this one here, got it going, oil pressure is good, broke in the cam, but I cannot get an idle. So here we are with an issue and we got to fix it. Okay, so let's get working on it. So I got my friend Manny, who's also helped me taking it apart. Hey everyone. Manny, yes, you ready? Sir. Oh yeah. So we've got a double gasket we installed on the uh, valley pan. Okay. I had the intake manifold plane down 60 thou. Good. I don't know if you want to try and put it on. You I'll see, uh, on the, uh, see if it sits properly. As we said, you made a vacuum test and yeah. you saw we saw air uh, vacuum coming out of the PCV valve right there. That's right, that's right. So uh, we're just hoping that it's probably the intake manifold not sitting correctly with the cylinder heads. True. I also checked for cracks. I didn't see any whatsoever. No, neither did I. So if you want to try it on. I'm going to put it on, Nick. Let's try it. And, that's uh, my exercise for the night. Okay. And okay. If, uh, if everything goes nice. Let's see what we got. Because when I was looking it. at it. Yeah. I noticed that the uh, bolt holes were not lining up. They were way, way off. Okay. And there was no gasket in place. So now, when I look down, now and, and the bolt holes are high, okay. which means when we put the intake, they're gonna go and just center themselves, maybe a little low, but they should cover you, Nick. And I'm trying something unusual. I'm putting a paper gasket on both sides of the valley pan gasket. You want a nice safe seal. Yeah, because maybe it might compress more on the top, less on the bottom. Right. And I'm hoping the paper will take up the space or I the gap. I think you'll be okay. And this the is the way a, that you've planned and it. And this out. is a factory cast iron intake manifold. Yeah, this looks uh this looks like it'll work, Nick. Well, you know what? We'll take let's, it off and try it out. Let's bolt it together and hopefully it works. Alright. When Nick first asked me to take a look at it. I have a vacuum pump at home and uh, basically I hooked it up and I was looking for vacuum leaks. You can actually hear a hiss from around the intake if there is a leak, usually. What I did though is once you block these leaks that are around the edge, around the china rail, then it'll start going through the, um, through the uh, crankcase. crankcase. So once you get it from the crankcase, you know right away that there's a, there's a gap between the head and the intake and you stop there, you know where the problem is. So unless it's somewhere else, it's like we would have, we would have seen a different scenario. But in this particular case, it was a textbook. You seal off the corners, it comes through the crankcase, and we take off the intake and cut it. Now so we should be good. we've done that part. We've got yep. the paper gasket on both sides of the valley pan gasket. 
like so, this should work. And hopefully it does the job. Cross so, our fingers. Manny, what do you say? You ready to put it together? Let's put it together, Nick. Okay, so I'm gonna start Clean putting up. my uh, favorite silicone in the corners, put my uh, rail uh, gaskets. Have and we then cleaned the surfaces so there's no oil? I already cleaned it. All we need Perfect. to do is uh, put a little bit of brick cleaner with a clean rag right there. Got it. There you go, use some of that. Thank this you. is good stuff, GRC, it works for me all the time. Ooh, CRC, okay. I like this stuff. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Let's go. Got another, uh, we got another, uh, we have to keep looking for this leak and I hope it's, uh, hope we get it done because you know, I've got another engine I gotta put on the dynamometer. Another 455, but a Pontiac. Not a 440, not a Mopar, not a Ford. So here we are, GM 455 Buick, and now we got a Pontiac 455 coming up soon. So, and who knows, and who knows, maybe a 45 automobile one day. That'd be cool. And you know, they are all GM motors, they're all same cubic inch of 455 cubic inch, and nothing is interchangeable. These three divisions are completely different engines. Right here we got a Buick, and when the Pontiac comes in, it's gonna be blue. And then when the Oldsmobile if ever comes in, it's gonna be a gold engine. And red is for Buick. There you go. Okay, I'm ready to get you going with this one. Let's go. And this stuff uh, does wonders, let me tell you. What are you using, Permatex? I'm using Permatex. I use Permatex for uh, corners, for the Gasket seals. maker. Gasket maker, and good. it works like a champ. Yeah, that stuff's good Okay, stuff. here we go. Let me get this corner. And this time, that's gonna get compressed some more because we brought down the intake manifold. True. Okay, here we go. All we right. always put a tab in the corners because that's where usually when you have an oil leak in an intake manifold, always make sure the corners are clean. You put some silicone and guarantee it ain't not gonna leak. Yeah, as long as you get some compression going yeah. here we from go. the intake, you'll be fine. Remember the first time we did it? It didn't yeah. compress the seal at no, all. No, not at all. Okay. It was just floating. Now we put the uh, valley pan. There we go. That's more like it. Okay. Okay. The valley pan is ready. Just throw it on. Matter of fact, George, Manny, hold on a second. I want to make sure there's no oil in the corners. Give me a second. Here. Uh, no, Oops. there isn't. No, there isn't. No, you're clear. It's clear. Give it a shot. Okay. Here we go. Hold on. See that? Oops, look at this, got out of the way, yeah? It's okay, it'll, it'll reseat itself. All right, there we go. This and is then good. we have to reload the silicone on top, right? Yeah, I'm gonna reload the silicone, yeah. Is this lined up? I can't see it. Okay, oh, on your side. has to come down. No. Oh, uh, you know why? We need to bend these tabs Yeah. Down. Okay, give me a second. I'll uh, tap them down with a little... Uh, you have a hammer or screwdriver? Yeah, right here. Okay, oh, right there? It. Yep. Now we have to compensate for the gasket. Nothing, eh? Yeah, but you have to do the other side too. I know. I'll hold it. Okay. Did it work? I think so, but this is... No, I it's like, underneath. wait a minute, let me take it off. It's like having a whole bunch of pieces in the air, like juggling. Okay. All right. That locks it in there. Got okay. it. There we go. This one okay. locked in. Okay, this one has to go on top. This one. Put it on top, Nick. On top? Yeah. This one didn't go down. Look, it has to come down. There. Okay. There we go. We got it locked in. Did that lock in? Yeah. Now we just have to make sure we get these corners set. I like. How do you want to do it? I like I like it like this underneath. Okay. Let's go underneath. Okay. Give me a second. Yep. It's just, I know the double it gasket. Won't go, it won't go on the, this corner. No way. Eh, you know what? It's almost there. Look, it's uh, it's close. It's gonna it's gonna squeeze it. Okay. You, you want to just add a little bit more silicone there? Yeah. And, okay. Uh, this one here. Ah, uh, there we go. Okay. Where's the silicone? Here we go. Tell me when you're ready, and I'm gonna load up the uh, okay intake. You ready? Uh, almost ready. Tell me when. Okay, bring it on. All right. 
I'll drop the first corner. Did I, how close are we? Wow, I don't know. Actually, the holes are almost perfect, Nick. You sure? Their lineup is good. Okay. It just, we're gonna have to squeeze it down to get into that corner. I think we're in there, look. It's, it's pretty high because of the double. Yeah, but when you look at the gaskets, yep. don't look at the gaskets, look at the opening on the intake. It's like almost centered on the, on the threads. I see. Okay. Only the gaskets are a little off, but. Okay. The gaskets will be fine. Bolts. There's bolts are right there behind you, all in red. Lovely. Uh, which side is the, They're all the, the return spring? I got that one. Here we go. Wow. Seems pretty easy, eh? Straight yeah. in, straight forward. This should be good, Nick. There goes one bolt. <laughs> and every time I drop a bolt, it disappears. You got it? Yeah. Usually when I drop things, I cannot find them. That's they roll away into oblivion. Thank you, sir. They will start from the center in and out. I mean, start from in, they go out. Okay, there's that. And you know what, while you're, while you're bolting this down, I'm gonna start doing the oil pump. Sounds good, Nick. What's wrong with the oil pump again? Look, this is the original paper gas that came with the pump, it's so thin. Wow. But I got another one from Felpro, which is slightly thicker. I hope it does the job. That's the one that came in from Mechanic Auto Parts. Yes. My brother got me this from uh, Felpro, and uh, let's see now. I'm gonna put this in, and then uh, let's see how it goes. Yep, my brother's from Mechanic Auto Parts got me the uh, gasket I needed. And this better be good. That's well, a good thing we have uh, some auto parts locally that we can trust. Yep. Well, this apply us everything. True. From regular stuff to high performance. Okay, it's almost snug. Let me see oh. how I line up. You know what to do. Yeah, it's good. Okay, I got this. Oh, let's not forget the gears. <laughs> yeah, that would be. Uh, that would be you know what? I might need your help here, buddy. All right, just to let I'm me. I'm gonna know put the I... gears in, and I'm gonna do this. Okay. Okay, hold on. Let it sit. Ready? There's what do the, you need? There's the two gears. Put them up in there. Show me where. Up there. The long one goes on your bottom. On the inside. Yes, sir. So now we the distributor. Yeah, it's in. And this just oh, has to be. Oh, really? higher, 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 higher. There we go. Okay, hold it there. Holding. You ready? Uh, there we go. That's it. You want me to hold it in place while you bolt it? Uh, yeah. Okay, I got it. I want to make two turns here, a few turns there, if I can. If anybody ever says that we, there, okay? that we have uh, an aversion to building anything other than Mopar, yeah. they'll be ashamed of themselves. No, no, no. We We've do done it all. all, man. We've done them all. Let it go. Got Let it? Go. Thank you. No problem. All set. All right, let me continue on my merry way. Well, we're gonna try to fix both issues at the same time. One with the oil pump leak, and the other one with the vacuum leak on auto. Yeah. Hopefully it works out. Well, Nick, you've done pretty much as much as you can well, to seal it. it. Let's give it our best shot. Yeah, these, uh, 
Intake gaskets are starting to compress now. Okay. Scores! Sorry, different sport. Okay. Now we'll try from this position too. How's the front looking? Oh yeah. Oh, it got some in. good. It got some good squeeze. Okay. That's what I needed. All right. Okay. Next, I got that carburetor. Here's the gasket. Thank you, sir. Here's the carburetor. There you go. Thank you. Of course, where's the bolts now? Oh yeah, I got two of them. You got two of the bolts? Yeah, because it's too they're too short they're and still, too long. They're all here, Nick. You got them all? Yep. Okay, while you do this, I'm gonna put all in my uh, oil filter. Yes, please. We have Bu Buick stories. The th the sad part is we like Buicks. We've uh, the brothers actually ran a Grand National at one point. So the thing yeah, is, we, yeah, we yeah we like. Yeah, we like Buick. We owned a Grand National in 1987 at one time. Until they, you know, sometimes... It was a, it was a V6 turbocharged, 231 V6. That's right. And we bought a brand new from Buick, 1987. That was funny. We're going to put a new filter, fill it up with oil. I got a new gasket on it. Okay, okay. here we go. But yeah, there's uh, we have a, a little bit of a history with uh, Buicks. Okay, Leo, you got the fuel. Yeah. Good man. Okay. Atta boy, Leo. You want to fill it up for me? Sure. Put the funnel there. Okay, oil pump is on. Oil filter's on. I'll put my bypass holes on right now. It's 94 octane. There we go. Put it in, buddy. This time the pump works. Oh yeah, they got it running finally. You know, uh, Leo went early to the uh, service station, and uh, the pumps were not working. Both gas stations. Both, eh? And that now can't be right. he has to make a second I'm trip. Not joking. That's terrible. He has to make a second trip to uh, get fuel for the dyno testing tonight. Well, we're almost ready. Let's see what happens. Oh, look at this now. This doesn't want to catch. I got my fingers crossed. Yeah. Fingers crossed. No, I'm pretty sure. What's wrong, Nick? Okay, give me a second. I'm gonna put the bypass holes, but I won't catch. Okay. Fuel holes. Fuel holes. Fuel holes. Fuel. Oh yeah, I got wait, Manny. You got to put the fuel line on in the front. Give me a second. Yep. Hold on. Holding. Holding. Where's that fuel line? Nick, you got a full tank again. Okay. Is there a fuel line on it? Yeah. Oh, there is. Okay. While you do that, WD-40, where is it? There you go. All right, there that's is. safe. Thank you, good enough. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, man. There All right. Uh, we got to turn on the main switches. We got to fill it with water. One. Water line. Two. Okay, I gotta turn this on. The water, yes, we gotta fill the water. This is closed. Oh, wait a minute. Temp gauge, water temperature gauge, cooling temperature gauge, whatever you wanna call it. Word. You name it. On the top. Right here. Got it. Done. Actually, let me bring it further in. For some reason, everything passes in front of the oil pump. You know, it's a very you popular look, item. And you know, you want to look for an oil leak, and it, it's leaking oil where everything is uh, Located. situated. That's nice. Right. Okay. Yeah, it makes life difficult. But All right. Nothing we haven't lived with before, Nick. That's why you're the man. Okay, I got this. Now you can turn on the water, which is the one on the left. Fill it up. Oil filter's on. I got to fix the wiring so that it does not 
Ah, okay. Where's the tie wrap? Give it a chance. Okay. This goes like this, like that. Just I want to make sure they don't fall onto the exhaust manifold, uh, headers, as you say. Okay. It's a good hey, point. we're running points on this, hey, by the way. Like I said before, I love okay. points. They're so simple. When they work, they work well. Ah, yeah, there you go, right? Oh, it's when they don't work that it scares me. Here's another one. Time. Here we got an issue. Tie wrap. Uh, tie wrap, but where? Hold on. You have these. Okay, this is the only one really weighted down. Yeah, no, your... it looks pretty good. Yeah, you just have to maybe pull that yeah, one forward. Give me a 760 inch key, uh, man, if I can fix this here. And there was a return spring somewhere. <sighs> I think it's on the table there. Is the short 60, one okay? Uh, 716, thank you. There we go. Then we need to warm it up, it doesn't have a choke. So, oops, one side. Okay. Sorry, this is the side I need. There's a spring for the carburetor return somewhere there on the table. I'll find it. It was there, somewhere. I'm leaving the, you know what? I don't want the oil splashing out of the valve cover, so I'm gonna put a hose like this, so I can breathe. Perfect. All right, there's the spring, thank you. This goes like so, like that, like this. Uh, Manny, by the way, I did break in the cam. Good. And that's as far as this I've gone. Yeah, and when the intake was off, I looked at the lobes, they looked fine. They, yeah. Nothing seems, uh, yeah. seems to have worn out, so we should be good, Nick. You know, then when I got it to idle, you know, the only way the engine would idle is when I used to shut off the uh, front two barrels. Yeah, that's... On both carburetors. I tried his carburetor and my Holly, and they both did the same issue. Hey, Nick, can I ask you a question? Yes. Five bolts, right, holding off a valve cover. Yes. So the guys back when we raced the Buick, the guys with the full-on race Buick, yes. when we were running, supposed to be running stock cars. You remember that? It was five bolts. Yes. They they, no. they refused to take off five bolts That's to take right. off one. And, we, all we asked, was, we were doing, a, we were offering a full teardown on our motor. Yes. And all we asked is to remove five bolts. All I asked was remove the valve cover, show me what you got, and they said no. Beautiful valve cover. And that is the reason why we packed up and left. Let's see what this 450. This is another. Do that. This is. This is another story when we used to have the uh, Buick versus Hemi or Hemi versus Buick yeah. shootout in the USA. And uh, it was a one-to-one -one equal uh, race. That's right. You know, uh, race number three was Stock. us yeah. in Montreal. My Hemi Cooler versus another Buick. Stock. I brought, I brought- I'm repeating myself here, but- yeah, stock, stock, yes. I brought a fully pure stock 1970 Hemi Cuda to race a 1970 Buick stage one, 455. Yep. That's right. And apparently we found out that, you know, after we ran once, uh, that Buick was flying in uh, practically flat 12 seconds, even high 11s, and mm -hmm. they considered it to be stock. Yeah. And it was, it wasn't stock. And, you know, we were supposed to race two out of three. And you know what we did after the first race? That's right. We, we packed, packed up and left. Why? We were being had. That's it's right. not the car's fault. No. The car is what it is. The owners weren't exactly honest with us. We'll just put it that way. And so what we did is we packed up a left. Let's so the, at the end, it was eventually one and one. That's right. One for the Hemi, one for the beer. Let's see what this puppy And what do we got here? A 455 beer. <laughs> let's okay. see what you'll do, man. Let's turn on the console. Good. Let's get on the console, boy. I'll keep a lookout for fuel leaks. Okay, here we go. Let her rip. Yeah, I remember those days. Beer versus Hemi. Okay. I hear it, it gurgled, so it filled up. It's right. not leaking anywhere. I'm just gonna turn on the console. I'm not gonna feed in the information. Okay. All I wanna do is get the uh, dash or the gauges to work and that's it. All right, Nick. And uh, water. Water, here. Turn the water pump on? Yes. Make sure we got no, uh... oh, we gotta turn on the screen. Here You're right go. here. Let's turn on. Maybe you might have to add some. You want me to add a bit? Yeah, add a bit, please. Okay, we don't have a choke. We're gonna have to uh, pump it. It's a cold engine. It's okay. cool in here. We haven't ran the engine, so. Uh, so just having warm thoughts isn't good enough. Uh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> okay. Here we go. It's gonna open up in a few seconds. Let's see if it cranks over. We're oh, good. Yeah. Okay, there's our dash. Should we get going? I think so, Nick. Let's see okay, what you got. Okay, here we go. Ignition, starter. Oh, 
Almost. Almost. Oh, it's going to take a lot of fuel. Something tells me it's still running lean. Look, I'm having a hard time starting it. Here we go. I'm dumb now, okay? Yeah. 17 to get How long can you get a title? I know, I'm, I'm going down slowly to take a reading. Watch this. Oh, 
all loose? I don't think so. Wow, I never had a heart before. Look at the oil pressure. Oil pressure 50 pounds. Good. We're good, not bad, not bad. Checked everything here. What do you think is loose? Look at those. Maybe. You can see from the opening there. I know, I'm looking for the other side. Here. Could be the springs too, just popping. That's what I think. Usually it does it on idle. Here we go. Water. Water. You want to touch in the end bolt, Manny? What's that? You're going, there's water, uh, tighten them with a key. 916s. 916s, yeah. I'm gonna back up the uh, timing. Yeah. Yeah, maybe a bit, huh? Yeah. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna back up the timing and then we're gonna hook up the vacuum advance, which is right here. Or maybe here. Hold on. Let's check this here. Ah, yeah. okay. One base vacuum. You have a smaller plug? Yeah. Can you see that? In the top drawer, Manny. Give me the key. Okay, go do it. Okay. Manny. You got more vacuum. I want to set it at 12 degrees on idle. You want what? 12? Yeah, look, I want, uh, wait a minute. I'll tell you what. Hold on, you want 12? Yeah. No, wait, wait. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me see if I can loosen the tube there. It's in a very, it's in a very tight area. Okay. Can't get it. Uh, can't get a key in there. So. There you go. You're moving now. Okay, I want to rev it. Let's say three and a half, four thousand. Okay. Uh, get it started. Ready? Uh, I'm gonna rev it up. Okay. Take off the rod. Do we? Yeah. Take off the rod. Start it. Crank it. Thank you for the rock. 
about. It's on the back one, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, we got it to idle. We got good oil pressure, we got good vacuum, we got air fuel ratio. Yes, yes. Here, let's close it down a little bit. Pump's good, look. on the RPM a little bit. many times, a couple of times actually. Now that the intake is cut, it's sealed. Right and you know, the and the intake gas that I received yesterday was the only one I found in town. I, I haven't found another one yet. But anyways, you know, whoop, oh, what happened there? You know, you that know? comes and goes once in a while with this motor. I don't know why. Here. Here we go. What? The voltage was also a little low. You know what? Let we it charge. Let it. We put fuel, right? Yes. Let it charge up a bit. I'll set up the. Uh... Turn off the auxiliaries. There you go. Okay. Let me feed the information to the computer. There you go, Nick. You I'm see so how it happy, shuts? Man. You see how it shuts down once in a while? You know what, Nick? It, it is points. If you're low on voltage and you have points, it doesn't take much more, right? No. You know what? Let it charge a bit. Because I was noticing you were 11 something, one in the red. I said, let me turn it, let me check it. Yeah. The, the ground the ground cable had fallen off. Yeah, it did. So I reattached it. Oh, this year? From the charger. Oh, from the where, charger. from there? Yeah. You're kidding. So I put it back. Okay, later we need to charge it. Yeah, and All that's right. why I'm thinking yeah, the ignition's it is. just failing every now and again. Okay. Wow, we finally got it to idle. Can't believe it. I've tried so many times. So when the cam is broken in, we got to set the timing. We got the air fuel ratio on idle. Let's feed the information to the computer and hopefully we can do some testing. Wow. I haven't tested a Buick since last year on a dynamometer. It's about all time. Right. Sorry? I'm speaking on behalf of all the Buick guys. It's about time. Yes, <laughs> I know. All the Buick lovers are going to love this, I hope. Okay, let's find the, uh, just to be sure, bore and stroke, it's 40 over. Okay, here we go. Engine specifications. 1970. Okay. 
We'll be back with more of the Red Hot Buick 455. But first, here's a special message from Nick. I know a lot of you guys are watching, but you're not subscribed. So subscribe to my channel. Doesn't cost anything. So hit the like button and it really helps the channel. Come on, you guys, do it. Thank you. Thanks for supporting Nick's Garage on YouTube. We really appreciate it. And now back to the dyno. We're gonna start at 3,000 RPM and finish at five grand. Well, it's full. Uh, yeah. Checking the dipstick. Looks good, Nick. Okay, we're gonna take it at 300 RPMs per second. Don't forget this factory, this engine made from the factory 360 horsepower with exhaust manifolds. We, and we've got headers on it right now. I don't know what the factory, uh, well, then again, we had a different cam from the factory. We had exhaust manifolds, a Rochester, cast iron intake like so. But now we got headers, a little cam, a little bowl area. Hopefully we should do a lot better than 360 horsepower. And right from the factory, it's 5, 10 foot pounds of torque. You know, we're gonna check the RPM later on and we're gonna see. You know, with so much torque, yeah. Uh, Manny here is checking the uh, friction plate on the back of the dynamometer. We wanna make sure it's tight. tight. It is tight, eh? Yeah, it's all good. We tighten it real good with, uh, here. It's a three quarter bolt, you can see it right there. Yeah. Is it's it tight? Fine. Yeah, it's tight. 11 sixteenths, I think it is. I'm also checking the uh, rivets, make sure they're all there. Yeah. You got it, Nick? <clears throat> no, that's tight. good. Yeah, I think we're good, Nick. We're good. I think it's probably good. just the springs rattling. I know. Loading and yeah. unloading. And usually I get that on idle. We, we tightened down the intake. I snugged it down again now that it's done a heat cycle. So it should compress everything nicely. Vacuum was good, Nick. Vacuum, we got it. We got good vacuum. We got a good air fuel ratio on idle, which I didn't have before. Uh, and, ignition, and you set the ignition timing. I got the timing at already now. I set at a maximum 36, 37 degrees max timing. With a va at, uh, vacuum 35, 3600 RPM without the vacuum. Good. Now I've connected the vacuum, get some advance on the idle. Also, I also replaced the oil pump gasket. Good, and so leak. far, so good. Excellent. So we got two items working. Now the next thing we need to do is run it. <laughs> right? Yeah. That is correct. And you know, I hear the engine's very nice and quiet. I don't hear no lockers. Nope. So uh, I'm just, uh, I can't wait to see what this thing is gonna make. It's it right on point. You know that, eh? got factory points that's where it came in that's where we're gonna run it by the way I, I wanted to try another distributor on hand but I didn't have one at the moment just to try an electronic distributor see but, if it'll give you anything yeah, yeah. To see if I got anything but it doesn't matter you know what it is what it is we got headers on it is he gonna run it with points uh, yes this okay. is the way we are going to deliver it all right all I need to do is now charge the battery a little bit because yeah. our battery cable came off the battery so you give us a few minutes to charge the battery and then we're gonna proceed with testing the engine don't tell me. We have more fuel? Uh, we have about three, four inches at the bottom. We have more fuel? Should be yeah. enough. How much did you put in? Almost to the top. Man. Put more, put some more, put some more. Wow. Put some more, buddy. <laughs> Ooh, She's dude. Thirsty. Yeah, put some more. It took. Right. Manny, put the funnel there. There's sure. about, uh, it's, it's, it's about a third. Right? Right? Yeah, you just get the funnel, put it in. It's about a third. Wow. It's a thirsty motor, right? Eh? It is a big 455 cubic inch. 40 overboard. It's a thirsty, thirsty guy. You know, this is a factory 510 foot pounds of torque. 510 torque? 510, 360 HP. For those days when you want oh, to keep pull. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Oh, we're good, we're good. Okay, For those we're days good. when you want to pull the house with you. Yep. Yes, sir. You know, this we're is good. the one that we also have the uh, main artery. On the block we had it drilled out, remember? This is the one. This is the block we drilled out. Ooh, okay. For the oil pressure, yeah, yeah, oil yeah. volume. That's right. The main caps. This is the one we drilled out and we tapped. This is it. Wow. Come on, give it a few more minutes and let's go. Come on, man. I can't wait to test it. You know where we should connect now? The What's PCV that? valve. Here. What is take it? that off, connect it there. What do you say? Okay. It's right here. We All go right. for it. But this uh, one, this is very tight line. here, right? Look, this was very tight. That's okay. You need you to put it in. We'll I struggled the other day to put it in. Here, you know I'll that? do that. You pull the one off the front because okay. I can't see that one. You can't see that one? I'll take care of it. There we go. Just put She's it in. in. I had it earlier in before, but I took it all off. <laughs> this one here, look how high it is, eh? Yeah, but it's uh, wow. it's okay. okay. It's, it started to seat, mm. which we, we didn't have before. 
Listen, as it heat cycles, we can tighten this down. How about if I put a thick layer of silicone in, in there? Let's see what it gives us first. I know, let, let's get to reading. Because right. I want to see if, uh, if this moves at all. Another thing, let's see if it oils now with the PCB valve can. True. Because now it should be running leaner. That's right. Okay, come on, charger, let's go. It's still charging, man. Don't forget, we don't have an electronic issue. We got an electric fuel pump running it. We got the water pump running on the battery. What else? Ignition, well, it's on a single set of points. Give it a few more minutes and we're ready to blast it. Okay, boss. Let's look up Buick. Oh, wow. What is it, Nick? It's rated, I don't know which engine this is. Is it a real stage one or not? I'm not sure. It's okay. rated, there's one rated at 370 horsepower, 370 horsepower at 4,600, or 360 horsepower at 4,600. Where's the torque at? And the torque at is, the torque is 510 at 2800. Both engines, 360 and 370. Okay, so that's what we're looking for. 2800 RPM. Yeah, and the cam will move it from there, but we're looking for those numbers. And the horsepower is 360 or 370, so it could be the one. Horsepower comes in at 4600 RPM, rated at 360 or 370. Okay. And the torque, Foot pounds, foot pounds of torque comes in at 2800, even though it's a 360 you, or a 370. Where are you horsepower. starting it? We're starting it at three grand. So I should start it earlier. Yeah. Okay, it's gonna be a max torque. Okay, there's gonna go. be a lot of torque. We're gonna early. have to start it earlier. You know what? I'll try to start it at 26. Yeah. But if it locks up, if I can do that, let's see. Oh. Well, we might have to adjust the valve, okay? Yeah, if it's I'll putting out 500 pound feet of torque right there. <laughs> 26, there we go. It's gonna be interesting. 26 to 5,000. What do you say, you ready? I'm good. Okay. Charger's good? Yeah, you're good, you're 80%, I think. Don't forget, is this real stage one motor? I do not know. We'll find out soon. I, I didn't look into it, they just told me it's a 455 Buick. Well, you know what, it doesn't really matter. We're gonna take with what we got here. This exactly. is what the client brought, this is the cam we put in, this is the headers you brought in. We put it all together, and let's see what we got. Okay, here Sounds we go. Sounds good. Let's lean into it. O2 sensor on. Let's see if it idles now with the PCV valve. And here we go. I'll check for leaks. Okay. Everything looks good there, Manny? You're good, Nick. Okay, thank you. I'm just waiting for the O2 sensor to come in and uh, we'll take it from there. Sounds good. Houston, we're ready to go. <laughs> Quarter key. Bring it out, bring it out. Oh. We can't try to, we're trying to get the absorber to lock in at 2600 RPM, but uh, man is going to adjust the absorber so we can lock it at 26 because uh, it seems to be sliding or should I say slipping. Okay, let's go, let's try it again. Here we go. Let's try it again. But it's misfiring, eh? Good. Manny, open it more, open it more. More, 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 more. Okay, here we go. Okay, we're ready to go. I think it should work there. All right. Okay, let's try it. Should I pull it out a little, little bit more? 
Yeah. Man, he didn't run smooth at all. You know that? Yeah. He did not it's, run smooth at all. Up. It was cracking up. Okay. It's not pig rich. And don't forget, that. you know, this is a set of points in there, which I uh, have not replaced yet. And I got a new set of points right there. But uh, yeah, we had a lot of misfire there. Didn't go good at all. Okay, I'm not happy with this, but uh, after all, let's see if the oil pressure was good. Take a look. Oil pressure was good. Yeah, oil pressure is there. Well, you know what? I got it to idle with the PCB yep. valve. I got, no oil I got no oil leak, so that's good. So now the only thing left? Ignition. Now we have an ignition problem. Oh. We had misfire. But so. maybe it's the points. Let's take a look at the points. I haven't looked at them yet. There are new plugs, there are the wires that came with the engine. God, should have turned. Turned back. Nice. Yeah, I just turned it away. There we go. Okay, now we need a first screwdriver. I got a new rotor there. Uh, Here you go. There's at least one point that's off. Where? You have a new rotor? Yes, sir. If you look at one of the pins, Where? one of the uh, towers. That one there, right? You see it? Yeah. What comes is like that? It's all rusty. I don't know. Yeah, right there. Uh, would that make it a misfire? It depends. You know what? Let's take a look at the points. All right. Yeah, I'll just crank it over. Make sure they open up, okay? Watch Hold it. On, Nick, Nick. Come here. Are they open? Come here. Take a look. Let me see. There's like a, I said, there's I, some yeah. I just threw on the distributor. Yeah. So look at the side. I mean, they're they're there. They're not. They didn't pop off. But if you look at the side, there's some fusing. All right. You see you the wear? Let's give it a shot. Let's change it. No, you know what? And this is a they're condenser. Clean, just. It looks like they may be a little worn. It's seen some heat. You think so? Oh, look at this. Yeah, they're look blue, at the color. Eh? Yeah. I don't think it was designed to be like that. Well, you Probably know what? somebody left it key on for too long. You know what? Here, I'm gonna move this over so I can get the, uh... watch out. Okay, put it towards. There you go. Can I get a screwdriver there? Get yeah. a screwdriver there? We're all good. Here we go. Let's take this out. Man, hold it for a sec. Got it. Okay, take this out. The condenser is one piece. Loosen, That's nice. Loosen that one. Here we go. Should not take long to do this. Here and we go. The condenser's in the back, eh? This yeah, one's this is in. one piece now. You're going to remove it, or? Yeah. I don't usually remove the screws when I change points, like so. You shouldn't have See to. See that? Yeah. So this one would go in like? No, that one first. That's that? Yeah. That side first. This side first? Yep. What the heck's on the bottom though? Check yep. this out. Yeah. Is that supposed to pin itself somewhere? Sure. Oh, eh? Why is that there? Do that you should have go it on there. the original? No, that should be that should be it. Here. Oh, the original has it too, Nick. Yes. It probably holds it up against the uh, opening. Here. There, there you go. go. Okay, it's now we're going to move the other uh, condenser, we don't need it. Oh, there we go, back old school, man. One set of points, 1970. This is too much, eh? <laughs> yeah. I'm used to playing with electronic ignition, but you know what? This is really old school. Last time I did points on a car, Yeah. it's been a while. It was putting you cap at the same time, what do you say? Uh, if you have one. I have one, you know what? We'll put it in. Just because. Now, let's see if the whole points open and close as I crank it. Here we go, watch this. Huh? Did, you, did they open and close? I didn't see it. Either. No. No? They're not moving. They're not moving? Nope. Why not? Uh, do they need adjustment? Oh yeah, they're never adjusted perfect. <laughs> no, gotta, gotta go the other way. Okay. Yeah. They're moving now. They're moving? Yeah. Okay, let's put the new cap on. It should have a dual angle of 30 degrees. Okay, here we go. Let's put this on. Man, you know how to put the cap on on this one? I'm gonna try. Okay. So this is negative. And this is my ground. Where's my ground? There? Find the ground, any ground. Okay, I need to find a ground here, buddy. Okay, right here. Are you ready? Okay, I'm gonna start it. Hopefully the dual we'll meter is with the uh, this here. Oh, open or close? See that? Huh, that's this? cool. 
Let's see if it starts. And it's supposed to be 12 volt? Yep, 12, 12 volt. volt. Okay, now we get it where? At 30 degrees. Open, close, you can see. Let me get it started first. Okay, here we go. Ready? Yep. We're 30 degrees. 30? Go a bit more. Go it up, take it out. No, get away. And then pull it out. Whoa. No good, no good. Looking good, put the fan on. Okay, let's go. Let's see, let's hope we can get it at 2600 RPM. Ready? Here we go. It's getting loud, eh? Okay, here we go. You have a misfire there? No. Nope. It went smooth, eh? Yep. Yes, look at that. <laughs> the Success. torque, where's the torque? We're missing the torque. Okay, air fuel ratio, RPM, oil pressure. Everything seems good so far. We'll check for oil leaks in a few minutes. Look at this. Here, we'll cool it down. Okay, so we got a little bit less compression ratio than before. We got like a 9.6 versus what the factory is, which I'm gonna check in a minute. 357 horsepower at 4700 rpm but our torque is way off we should be we're nowhere near 500 maybe it's the headers that we lost all the torque eh? it's possible it's good possibility because the exhaust mount should be easy a higher torque reading look we're nowhere near 500 factory is like 5 500 510 look at this yeah but we got nowhere near it where's the uh, torque it's at 28 2800 RPM. At 27, you're 463, you're the highest, it's dropping off. You know what? But yeah. your horsepower should be making it up. What was the horsepower rating? Right here, it's factory 360, 370. Uh, depending on what motor it is. But don't forget, we got a little bit less compression ratio than the factory because I can't get those exact pieces that we need. So you're and it's right. zero deck, it's also zero deck the block. Yeah. We took 15 tau off the block. You're right around the 360. You know what, we're gonna play with some timing. Let's check the air fuel ratio. Yes, please. Yeah, we're pretty good. 12.9, 12.8, we're good. Okay. How's now, the... Maybe we should give it some timing. We got vacuum. Vacuum is good. What's the timing at? Uh, the timing is at 36. Yeah, I knew it. Compression ratio from the factory is 10. Okay. And by the way, I needed the thinner head gaskets, which I didn't uh, receive at all. I couldn't find it nowhere. Okay. And we waited three months, we gave up, and we went with the 50 thou head gasket instead of the one that's 39, where it gave me a lot more better compression ratio than instead of 9.6 versus 10.0 from so the factory. On, so we're low on compression. We're low a little bit on compression. Okay. You know, that explains and, and, it. And I was waiting for those uh, other head gaskets, which I couldn't find them. You know, that. Nick, hey, at we the waited end of the a long day, time for this. At the end of the day, you've got a little less compression. It's pump friendly, okay. pump gas friendly. If the car isn't racing and it's just a cruiser, it's a cruiser, plenty of power. Let's ask another question. What's that? Um, I'm gonna try to bring it less than 2600 RPM for acceleration. Ooh, very if good. If we can, if we can. Yeah. Can you open it up furthermore? I'm gonna try. If we can, and maybe I'm gonna play with the timing later on. What size is it, Nick, in the back? I'm, I got a hit. We got uh, three quarters, yeah. three quarters. Okay. I'm gonna try. I think okay. there's a little left. Maybe. Uh, you all, you all, finally, the oil leak, oh, the oil leak is perfect. No oil leak whatsoever. And we got the idle, which is great. And Manny, no more water leak. Look, it's done. Yeah. No more water leak. 
We're good. We're good. So far, everything's good. Now, let's get the torque numbers up. You know, with the exhaust manuals, I remember testing once a 440, stone stock 440. I had more torque with the manuals. With the exhaust manuals than the headers I put on. True. This could be the same reason. It could be. But you know what? We should get 370 horsepower. Yeah. I'm going to play with the timing. Listen, we'll play with it, but the honest the honest truth is, if you've taken compression out of it, yeah. you're going to be low on, por on torque and horsepower. And these heads were paint about 10,000. You know what? I'm very proud of this thing. It, it's, yeah. it came together. Okay. All right. All right, let's cool it down. Let's make another test. Sounds good. Then well, after that, we're going to start playing with timing. The points are good. We set that well. And it, cap it didn't is good. misfire. The cap looked pretty good, so I'm not going to touch Listen, that. Listen, it didn't misfire now. No, it went smooth. Let's let it be. I tell you what, let's make a test the way it is. Well, that's the time a couple degrees and then go again. Okay. Where Sounds you guys? good. We do it. Let's go for it. Here we go. <laughs> Few, a couple of degrees. Just yeah. a little sprinkling. Here we go. See if I can get it. Oh, wait a minute. Watch this. If I can get 24, get it started, go okay. to 5,000. Here we go. Let's see what happens. Here we go. You ready? I'm ready. just popped out on its own. See that, just all, eh? Yeah. Uh, look at the power, is there at 354 or 355? Okay, I'm gonna get, you know what? Check it out. What's that? Yeah, we got more torque. We got more torque. We're at 460 to 2700, but we need to bring it at a less RPM for acceleration. Okay. We're, well, we'll try maybe a half a turn more. Try, even a full turn. Go ahead. I'll see. Go ahead. Maybe we have to do some adjustments on this side over here. So you know what? This it looks pretty good. I, I, I'm, I'm pleased that the uh, we finally got the air fuel ratio to work on idle. Intake got, isn't leaking. Intake's not leaking. Oil, Oil leak is fixed. Good. No and water leaks. No, no more misfire. Leaks, no misfire. Basically, it's ready to go in the car. After all, it is his own cast iron intake, his own carburetor. Air fuel ratio is on the money. You know what? It's a good old Buick. And you know what? You uh, give it some water, more water on the absorber. I'm gonna just advance the timing just a bit. All right. And we'll take it one more shot, see how it goes. Let's give so it to far, her. So far, I'm pleased with it. You know what? And, Make and it you know, success. You know, we got like a 468 torque at 4, 2700 RPM. 2700. Right. But if I could get this thing to load up at 23, 2200. It might show us the, the high uh, we're gonna torque be, number. We're gonna be closer to 500. Yep. I'm just gonna advance it just a bit. Nick is happy to have solved the vacuum and oil leak issues, but he just knows he can get more out of this big Buick. I wish I had those thinner gaskets, man. Yeah, he would have given you the numbers right away. Yeah, I wish I had that. All right, you, you know, know what? Maybe we could sneak up on it here. I'm gonna just I check don't the know. You know, I wish time. I had those thinner head gaskets. I've been Liz. calling my client on it. I never got him. How long were we waiting? Three months. I yeah. gave up on him. I these think are these are pretty thick gaskets. Considering I, what you have right now, Nick, yeah, it's working fine. You know what? It is a street cruiser. All right, I just advanced the time a couple of degrees, and uh, I'm just gonna go around check one more time. And, uh, let's make another test. We got the PCB valve connected. We got the vacuum advance under the sugar. We're double checking the intake manifold. Yes. So it was not sitting properly the intake manifold from That's what I see. That's correct. Not at all. And you know what? Even though. Even though I, I didn't deck the block much, I only cut 15,000 on the block, and the heads were playing maybe 10,000. That's it. Just to make sure they're nice and straight so we can have a good seal on the head gasket. They had probably been done previously, and so you stacked up your cutting to the existing to the previous cutting, so there was no way this intake was going to fit properly. Are you going to do another test? Absolutely. Let's go. Let's make another shot at it. I just want to see if it'll hold. So far, so good. No, I'm looking for noises. I'm looking for it's oil quiet. pressure. It's quiet. It's good. It's, it's good. not misfiring. It's, it's good. beautiful. Let's go. All right, let's hit it. 
Oh, I gotta cool it down. Where is she? She's at 190. Let me, yeah. just, let me cool it down. A couple of degrees. Let's cool it down. You have the water running through it? Yeah. Okay. The valve is open. And by the way, I wanted to say something. I'm running my client's Rochester carburetor. Now, is that a is that a Rochester carburetor for a stage one? I do not know. You know, I don't know which uh, which engine this is, but it doesn't matter. He's got a no. little cam that he bought that he has from Reed, which I've never heard of. No, I've heard of the company. It's just it's not a very popular one. No, it's not. Okay, here we go. You good? Yeah, I'm ready. I'm waiting for the O2 sensor to go on. Come on, come on, come on. There, there she goes. goes. Here we go. Just, it's all out by the way. The absorber is at maximum, yeah. maximum pressure. Okay, let me check now everything else. All pressure is good. It's holding. I want to check, uh, want to check for noises. Yeah. Smooth as silk. You know, the horsepower did not change whatsoever, uh, Manny. Did not change. We're still stuck at 352, three, yeah, 352 at 4600 RPM. Our torque came in at 2700 RPM at 461.2 at 2700 RPM. And that's with what, nine, nine and a half? 461 foot pounds of torque at 4700. Compression ratio? Well, we're down 9.4 uh, on okay. this one compared to 10.0 from the factory. Then, of course, this one has headers versus exhaust manifolds from the factory. But you know what? Is this a real stage one motor? I do not know. I didn't, I did not look into the details, but let me take a look. If it's not the 360, 370 version, yeah. what is it? Let's okay. take another one, for example. Well, there's another version that makes 350 horsepower. Well, you know what? It might be 350 with these cylinder heads. Look, uh, at the end of the day, Nick, you put this in any car yes. with almost what is it, 460 pound-feet of torque, yes. 350 some odd horsepower, it it's gonna rock it. To me, it looks pretty impressive for right now what I got. You know, and you're talking a cruiser, basically. I know, I know. You know, yeah, yeah. it's got headers, you know, it's like it's a little hopped up, but... I wish I had exhaust models to put on it. <laughs> that would be cool. Okay, well, I would like to try it out, let me tell you. <laughs> But uh, we're not doing the engine install, are we? All pressure is good. No, we're not doing no so engine So that's somebody else's shape. headache. So uh, you know what? I'm gonna call my client tomorrow. This is what I have. This yeah. is what it is. And when know. he gets the other head gaskets, he can upgrade. I There's know. There's horsepower to be had. I'm still waiting for him. Oh I have not received them yet. Oh boy. I think the part number is 1125, which is a 39 thou thickness. This is like a 50 thou. Yep. Maybe I should have played the head some more. Nick, in all fairness, it's a stout little motor. It, it sounds is. like a sewing machine when you when you go up close to it. Yeah. Did it, it sound good? What do you say? It sounds beautiful. How's the rocker noise? Is anything on that? Nothing, nothing, nothing. Look at that. No oil leaks whatsoever. And by the way, I installed a rope seal on this thing. Check it out. Look underneath. Nothing leaking. That's look look. great. Look at that. That's fantastic. That's a rope seal. There's very few people that know how to install a rope seal. There's a few out there that know how to do it. I've done it a few times when I used to work at the dealership working on Buicks. And I'll be uh, honest with you, I've never installed a rope seal. Okay, so you know what? It's uh, seven thirty at night. You know, I'm not gonna call nobody at this time uh, no. of the hour. I'm gonna call Dave during the uh, daytime tomorrow. I'm gonna give him the results. I was hoping there was nothing else for the uh, issue because it ran lean on uh, right. on idle. So uh, there you have it. I I had the intake manifold checked. No uh, no, cracks. no cracks whatsoever. We it's had sealed. it plain sixty thou. Yep. Double uh, gaskets. Double, double gaskets. You uh, tighten it two, three times? Yep. We finally got an idle. And don't forget, you guys, this is the original Rochester carburetor that came with my client. Cast we didn't put it, take? We didn't put no spacers. Nope. We put no Holly carburetor, nothing like that. You know, if we want to go any further testing, I'll ask my client. But yeah. in the meantime, I'm stopping here. Everything seems good. I know this is what I've got. The motor runs, got a good oil pressure, it's got the idle. Good idle. Air fuel ratio is perfect. Yep. I think the timing set at 36, 37. That's right. We and, set the uh, points. We set the points on it for him. I think it's ready to go. I think you're good, Nick. 
It's got 16 adjustable push rods in this motor. But you know what? They work. They do. They're heavy duty push rods. I adjusted them with almost a half a turn on the uh, adjustment on the hydraulic flat tappets. Yeah, that's sweet. You know what? Did you hear any noise or anything? Everything Nothing. went well? It's super smooth. Oil pressure is good. You know, there's something to be said about these big Buicks. Yeah. They, you know what? When you drive them, they, you can feel the torque when you accelerate yeah. with a heavy car. Yeah, these things were built for the heavy cars. They, after, they after, can handle them. After all, I've been driving some big Buicks when I used to work at the dealership in my days. What I'm going to do, I'm going to ask uh, my client tomorrow. See I'm what he call wants. Call him up, see what they give you some details, what this engine comes from. Okay. You know, I, here I am calling it a stage one. It may not even be. Is it or is it not? I'm not too familiar with Buicks. I know there's numbers on it everywhere. What kind of cylinder heads? I don't know. But anyways, my goal is to get it running. It's smooth. It's got the air fuel ratio. I'm happy. And there you have it, folks. 1974 55 Buick. Ready to, ready ready to, to go. Installation. Thank you, Manny. You're welcome, Nick. It was a pleasure. There you have it. Okay, one more test before we leave. Here we go. So you cooled it down? Yep. at 480. <laughs> there we go. That's my bad. Okay. That's our best test. That's our best That's test. Awesome. There we go. We got it. Just backed up the timing a couple times. This is our best shot we got. We're at 480 torque at 2700 RPM and our horsepower came in at 360.4 at 4500 RPM. There you have it you guys. It is what it is. I love it and it's great. And make sure everything is good. There's no oil leaks. Check it out. No and, oil uh, leaks. The engine's quiet. And we this backed is perfect. Up that, that's right. So it's good. That's good. It's so good, good. I think the owner will be happy with this. So the timing at 35 degrees is best. Yep. There we go. It worked, it worked wonders on the horsepower and torque. Yeah. So at the end of this day of testing, a couple of problems have been ironed out of the big 455. But Nick knows there's still more power to be squeezed out of this build. He'll speak with his client about options and see how far they're willing to go. You've not heard the last chapter of this Buick story. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe and like and stay tuned for next time. Like and subscribe people. Thank you. And you guys, if you look down below the video, we have a whole bunch of merchandise that you guys can buy. So whatever you like, buy it, love it, wear it and enjoy it and help spread the word of Vix Garage. And if you have some time, check out our Patreon page. We have extra content and you guys can watch it and take it from there. And we'll see you next time.